the first print at 930, that's your opening tick on this candle right here, that is the high. They don't change. These levels do not move around. They're not dynamic. But the opening range, which is the first 30 minutes, that is a dynamic range. It can expand throughout the entirety of that 30 minute time, time frame. Meaning right now the highest high is here. So it's this. And this is the lowest value right now. Okay. So this is why like, I, I'm not trying to draw these levels on it. I'm just watching and referring to them. And every time we make a lower low, I'm watching where we go after that. And if we start turning around and retracing, I'll mark whatever that lowest low is inside of up to 10 a.m. So this is what you're doing every single day. You're monitoring and watching from where we open, what is the highest high and the lowest low that forms until 10 o'clock. So I believe your name is Luisa. Luisa, you have some numbers before your name. You're usually very complimentary in the, the comment section, but you asked the difference between opening range gap and opening range. This is what you're doing. So hopefully this has answered your question. If not, ask again, I guess. I, I don't know. I see you just about every single day, multiple times in the comments. So anyway, <clears throat> the opening range is we're, we're watching. Do we have a fair value gap form? So an inefficiency. The very first fair value gap that forms after 930 in this first 30 minutes video, uh, interval is such a fucking powerhouse. It is such a wonderful secret weapon that I don't want none of you to tell anybody about it. So what we're looking for is in that first 10 minute interval, which is the opening range. OK, so uh, let's say it like this. Can you tell I'm having fun? I didn't feel good yesterday when I first woke up. So this is our opening range. So it's it's a time period. OK, it's a time period that begins at 930 and it goes up to 10 o'clock. That is the real opening range. The algorithm refers to this. It does not look at fucking 15 minute opening ranges. It doesn't look at the first five minutes. It doesn't look at the first 20 minutes. It looks at the first 30 minutes. Okay. That's what it does. So what your interest is, is you want to see what this dynamic range in, in time is doing. What's the highest high and the lowest low. And the first fair value gap that forms in this first 30 minutes, you want to extend that throughout the entirety of the day. Okay. All the way until 345 Eastern time, New York local time. You'll be surprised how often amazing, I'm talking amazing trades will form off that first fair value gap in that 10 minute, oh, I'm sorry, that uh, 930 to 10 o'clock interval, that opening range. I do not want you to take my word for it, okay? I've taught this in private mentorship. I've taught this and mentioned it in Twitter spaces last year, I think if, if I'm not mistaken, last spring, I talked about how you can do this. Okay. And because I have so many concepts, like I said, I got 81 of these things, 81 of them. And they're not all just inversions of one thing. They're individual things and they themselves are invertible. You didn't hear that word? I just, I just coined it invertible. You might have a convertible baby, but I, he's got invertible. Okay. Come on. Keep up, keep up. So right now, this is the lowest low. We want to see, does it expand down through it? The first probable level is that midpoint of the gap. And that gap is the opening range gap. Opening range gap. We'll put that in the middle. Make it real small like that so it's not too obnoxious. My ego is not obnoxious enough. We don't need any more, right? So you're always hunting, and I'm looking for it through not just a one minute chart, but I'm looking for it also in a 15 second chart, a 30 second, um, you know, 30 second, 15 second chart, 45 second chart. These motherfuckers got a lot of mirror column in written. Forgot to put this on, do not disturb. So now yeah, I'll try to do the answer. 
the the 15 second the 30 second the 45 second chart I'm watching that as well so right away I want you to think I've said it before it's not a panacea it doesn't mean it's gonna work every single time but whenever you have a gap up which is where we have what we have here we have yesterday's settlement price and you determine that by going into regular trading hours that's that price right there okay and you toggle that or not toggle but you annotate it and you annotate the first tick opening price that is your opening range gap now when it gaps up like that you want to find the midpoint of that because many many times you're going to see it trade to that level it may afford you a setup if there is a setup that yields a run from say you know, maneuvering something up here off of a premium rate and starts to break down and you get a fair value gap say on a 15 second chart or 30 second chart or a 45 second chart or the one minute and it affords you a range from wherever that gap is to the midpoint of the gap that could be your very first like training wheels so what are you doing in the first 30 minutes well if you don't know how to trade you should be studying observing what price is doing because you don't know what you're looking for so what can you do with that 30 minutes of time while not knowing how to trade you study it you look for the very first inefficiency the very first fair value gap that forms in that 30 minutes that's the one that the algorithm is going to like it, it's the it's, it's it's like the the center it's like the centerpiece okay it's the focal point for the daily range but the mid part of that gap whether it's an up gap okay so this is a premium gap why because we gapped higher than where we settled so this is a premium opening range gap if we gap lower than the previous day settlement and we say we open down here that is a discount opening range gap okay very simple same thing as soon as you get the first ticket 930 you want to throw a fib on that just to get the midpoint the midpoint has a seven listen to this bullshit okay it's all fake you're never gonna be able to find it in the charts promise you you're gonna waste your time if you back test this I'm being facetious but that's what everybody else is gonna tell you all you have to do is go back in time and look at it you'll see it's there it's a 70% chance that that mid gap level is gonna get hit now that doesn't mean that you're gonna get a 70% chance of getting an entry that's profitable that never got stopped out that never had drawdown it's just gonna be a straight line run right to the mid part of that gap it doesn't mean that what I'm saying is 70% is of the time from the opening price to 10 o'clock that level gets hit 70% of the time by in and of itself that right there should have you rock fucking hard that's Viagra for someone that understands pattern recognition you need to have something that repeats right you need to have something that is okay this is this is usually not always but it's usually likely to pan out if you can have something that offers and affords you the opportunity to have that much frequency how many times does the market open up every every week at 9 30 how many how many opportunities do you have of that <laughs> five right so you have five chances to go in every single day if we gap higher or if we gap lower you can do this drill you can watch it you can measure it you can see it and then what will happen is in the beginning you won't see a fair value gap you won't see a setup you won't see anything that is promoting you the opportunity to get into the trade and some of you are just going to say well i'm just going to get in here and sell short because he said it's seven you didn't listen you didn't listen there has to be something else in the chart that's technically supporting the idea that it will drop down there and how to time it what I'm saying is, is it's 70% likely between 9.30 and 10 o'clock that if we have a gap higher, or a premium gap in this case, that means that we opened higher than where we settled yesterday. The 50% of that gap, 70% of the time, it's getting tagged. It's going to retrade and reprice back down to it. It can, but you don't need this initially. It can go all the way back down and fill in the gap. Another instance is when you have this measurement like this and you know where you have the higher gap opening and we're in a premium gap you want to measure where your quadrants are upper and lower 
many times you'll see it go down and leave a smaller portion of the gap opening, which is really what I love seeing that. Because if, say for instance, say, say we're bullish, okay? Say we're bullish and we think price is going to go higher. What happens if it doesn't go down here and touch the midpoint of the gap? Does that mean that the market is undecided? Does it mean it's weak? Does it mean it's strong? Does it mean it's really, really bullish? It means it's really, really bullish. Because if it can't come back here, because 70% of the time, probabilities and statistically, you can go back and look and see the data. And don't go back like you know two weeks and say, oh, go back, make a, make a real project of it, and then make a project of it going forward. Start keeping records on this information I'm telling you. Really keep the data on it, and you're going to see, wow, there is something there. And then what will happen is, is you'll see that the examples I've shown where I've entered in before 10 o'clock, it's using this logic. And then I'll have a runner that would hopefully probe any movement below the midpoint of the gap to see if I can get down to the lower quadrant. And then all of a sudden, you'll see that's where, I, where my other partial was taken. And if I get a gap closure, I'm going to be a little bit higher than the full gap closure because it can do what? In a, in a perfect world, you want to leave a small portion of it open because every gap invite the opportunity that it doesn't completely close in or fill in. That's my that's my main focus so far when I've been teaching gaps in this 2024 is you don't want to see them completely fill in because that's rocket fuel. It's literally like pouring gasoline on a fire that's already burning bright. OK, you throw gasoline on it by not having a gap or inefficiency fully, fully close in. You have supercharged an idea that you may not be able to see it fleshed out early. Look at it right there. It's like, it's like this this guy's fucking got a rabbit's foot up his ass. <laughs> I'm not that kinky now. <laughs> so we had this one more time. So where we opened down here, 70% of the time. Now, if you go around, you look around for everybody's, you know, dollar menu, dollar menu mentorships. Okay. You're going to get a lot of regurgitated ICT stuff. They're going to try to change the names on things. Now, this is the old high of that volume of bounce. Watch that level as well. That's why it's there. Okay. Now, again, for the folks that are asking, what's on your notepad? What do you have in notes that's not on your chart? Because I don't, I don't like to have all this stuff on my chart. This is way too busy for me. Okay. This almost looks like, you know. And come on. There we go. There's the top of the volume of bounce it traded to. Okay. So if you didn't want to take a partial at the halfway point of the gap, that could be hitting it right there. Boom. That's your partial because you want to see it get below the opening range gap half. If that's your model. How many times, okay, have you heard someone try to teach something and they'll say, oh yeah, you got about a 70 some chance or you got 85%, you got 90% chance, or you see the scammers online. They'll say ICT model, hundred percent win rate. Guaranteed. Don't watch that. OK, guaranteed. Do not watch that. That's somebody just trying to use my logo and my name for clicks. And they're trying to get someone that's, that's stupid. OK, because nobody has 100 percent strike rate. I, I am not standing out here saying I'm 100 percent strike rate. OK, I'm telling you that if you can find something that I can prove to you by inviting you to do a free walk forward test, that means now you know the details. You can now walk forward every single day at the opening bell. Did we open higher or lower? Where's the halfway that gap? Half of that gap is going to get hit before 10 o'clock, 70% of the time. And that means there's something there that could potentially do what? Afford you a drill. 